And now, our interview with former President Clinton. This week, he hosted his second annual Global Initiative Forum in New York. More than $7 billion was pledged to tackle some of the worst problems in developing countries, such as poverty, disease, and climate change. As part of the conference, Mr. Clinton agreed to his first one-on-one -on -one interview ever on Fox News Sunday. The ground rules were simple. Fifteen minutes for our sit-down split evenly between the Global Initiative and anything else we wanted to ask. But as you'll see now in the full, unedited interview, that's not how it turned out. Mr. President, welcome to Fox News Sunday. Thanks. Uh, in a recent issue of The New Yorker, you say, quote, I'm 60 years old and I damn near died, and I'm worried about how many lives I can save before I do die. Is that what drives you in your effort to help in these developing countries? Yes, I, I really, but I don't mean... That sounds sort of morbid when you say it like that. I mean, I actually... No, you said it. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, but the way I said it, the tone in which I said it was actually almost whimsical and humorous. That is, this is what I love to do. It is what I think I should do. That is, I have had a wonderful life. I got to be president. I got to live the life of my dreams. I dodged a bullet with that heart problem. And I really think I should, I think I owe it to my fellow countrymen and people throughout the world to spend time saving lives, solving problems, helping people see the future. But as it happens, I love it. I mean, I feel it's a great a gift. It's a, it's a rewarding way to spend my life. Uh, someone asked you, and I don't want to, again, be too morbid, but you, you, this is what you said. He asked you if you could wind up doing more good as a former president yeah. than as a president. And you said, only if I live a long time. Yeah, that's true. Uh, how do you rate, uh, compare the powers of being in office as president and what you can do out of office as a former president? Well, when you're president, you can operate on a much broader scope. So, for example, you can simultaneously be trying to um, stop a genocide in Kosovo, you know, make peace in the Middle East, uh, pass a budget that gives millions of kids a chance to have after-school programs and has a huge increase in college aid at home. In other words, you've got a lot of different moving parts, and you can move them all at once. But you're also more at the mercy of events. That is, President Bush did not run for president to deal with 9-11, but once it happened, it wasn't as if he had an option. Uh, once I looked at the economic, I'll give you a much more mundane example. Once I looked at the economic data, the new data, after I won the election, I realized that I would have to work much harder to reduce the deficit and therefore would have less money in my first year or two to invest in things I wanted to invest in. So what is it that you can do as a former president? So what you can do as a former president is you, you don't have the wide range of power, so you have to concentrate on fewer things. But you are less at the mercy of unfolding events. So if I say, look, we're going to work on the economic empowerment of poor people, on fighting AIDS and other diseases, on, on trying to bridge the, the religious and political differences between people, and on trying to, you know, avoid the worst calamities of climate change and help to revitalize the economy in the process, I can actually do that. I mean, because tomorrow when I get up, if there's a bad headline in the paper, it's the President Bush's responsibility, not mine. That's the joy of being a former president. And it is true that if you live long enough and you really have great discipline in the way you, you do this, like this CGI, you might be able to affect as many lives or more for the good as you did as president. When we announced that you were going to be on Fox News Sunday, I got a lot of email from viewers, and I got to say, I was surprised. Most of them wanted me to ask you this question. Why didn't you do more to put bin Laden and al-Qaeda out of business when you were president? There's a, a new book out you may, um, I suspect you've already read, called The Looming Tower, and it talks about the fact that uh, when you pulled troops out of Somalia in 1993, bin Laden said, I have seen the, the frailty and the weakness and the cowardice of U.S. troops. Then there was the bombing of the embassies in Africa and the attack on the coal. Okay, let's just go let, through let, it. Let me, let me, may I just finish the question, yeah. sir? And, and after the attack, the book says that uh, bin Laden separated his, his leaders, spread them around because he expected an attack, and there was no response. I understand that 
Hindsight is always 2020. Well, let's talk about it. But the question is, no. why didn't you do okay, more, look. connect the dots, right. and put them out of business? All right, let's talk about it. I will answer all those things on the merits, but first I want to talk about the context in which this arises. I'm being asked this on the Fox network. ABC just had a right-wing conservative running uh, their little pathway to 9-11, falsely claiming it was based on the 9-11 Commission report, with three things asserted against me directly contradicted by the 9-11 Commission report. And I think it's very interesting that all the conservative Republicans who now say I didn't do enough claim that I was too obsessed with bin Laden. All of President Bush's neocons thought I was too obsessed with bin Laden. They had no meetings on bin Laden for nine months after I left office. All the right-wingers who now say I didn't do enough said I did too much. Same people. They were all trying to get me to withdraw from Somalia in 1993 the next day after we were involved in Black Hawk Down, and I refused to do it and stayed six months and had an orderly transfer to the United Nations. Okay, now let's look at all the criticisms. Black Hawk Down, Somalia. There is not a living soul in the world who thought Osama bin Laden had anything to do with Black Hawk Down or was paying any attention to it or even knew al-Qaeda was a going concern in October of 93. I, I, I understand. I, no, I, I no, wait, no, wait, no, wait. Don't tell me this. You asked me, why didn't I do more to bin Laden? There was not a living soul. All the people who now criticize me wanted to leave the next day. You brought this up, so you get an answer. But I, you I'm can't perfectly do, happy to all right, take all right, it. Secondly, answer. bin Laden says... That, but bin Laden may have said Bin Laden that, says ben, that, but it showed the weakness of the United but States. But it, it, it would have shown the weakness if we'd left right away. But he wasn't involved in that. That's just a bunch of bull. That was about Muhammad Adid a Muslim warlord murdering 22 Pakistani Muslim troops. We were all there on a humanitarian mission. We had no mission, none, to establish a certain kind of Somali government or keep anybody out. He was not a religious fanatic. But Mr. President, there was no al-Qaeda. With he, respect, if I may, without, with, instead of going through 93 and No, 96, no, you ask it. You I, brought it but up. May I, may I ask you a general question and then you can answer?